has diagram. So why has diagram is required? We'll see that. So what is has diagram and all that we'll see in this video. A partial order being a relation can be represented by diagram. But most of the edges, they do not need to be shown since it would be redundant. Suppose for example, we know that every partial order is reflexive. So since it is reflexive, it is redundant to show the self loops on every element of this set on which the partial order is defined. And uh, every partial order is transitive. So all the edges denoting transitivity can also be removed. And last word, the directions on the edges can also be ignored if all the edges are presumed to have only one possible direction conventionally upwards. So this is the requirement for drawing the hash diagram. Why? Because all these because of these properties. So in general, a partial order on a finite set can be represented using the following procedure. First, remove all the self loops from the vertices. So by default, it is assumed that every node is related to itself. This removes all the edges showing reflexivity. Now remove all the edges which are present due to the transitivity. That is, if AB and BC are in the partial order, then remove the edge AC. So it is by default, it is assumed that AC is there. Further, if CD is in the partial order, then remove the edge AD. Now arrange all these edges such that the initial vertex is below the terminal vertex. And last one, remove all the arrows on the directed edges since all the edges point upwards. Suppose, for example, the poset 1, 2, 3, 4 and less than or equal to, that is, the relation is less than or equal to on the set 1, 2, 3, 4 would be converted into hash diagram like this. So, first what we do here is we write elements. So, it is a reflexive, symmetric and uh, transitive. So, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3 are there. So, you have a self loop. Next, 1 is less than or equal to 2. So, you have an edge 1, 2, 2. And 1 is less than or equal to 3, so you have an edge. 1 is less than or equal to 4, you have an edge. Then 2 is less than or equal to 3, you have an edge here. Then 2 is less than or equal to 4, you have an edge. Then 3 is less than or equal to 4, so you have an edge here. So now this is your graph representation. How to convert this graph representation into hash diagram? So first thing is, as we have seen, the procedure is remove all the self loops. So we have removed all the self loops here. Then second step says that remove all the, <coughs> the transitive edges. So now since you can observe here, 1 is related to 2 and 2 is related to 3. So the edge 1 to 3 is removed here. Then 1 is related to 2 and 2 is related to 4. So 1 to 4 is removed here. Then 1 is related to 3 and 3 is related to 4. So, therefore, 1 to 4 is removed. So, likewise, all these edges which are transitive edges will go. Now, the last step is remove the direction. So, here 1 is related to 2. It is upward. So, again 2 is related to 3. It is again upward. 3 is related to 4. Again, it is upward. So, therefore, you remove the direction also. So, this is the hash diagram obtained for the given poset. Now we will see the extremums in posets. So some properties of the poset. So maximal elements. An element A in the poset is said to be maximal if there is no element B in the poset such that A less than B. So this is a notation we are going to use. That is, there does not exist B belongs to A such that A is related to B. That is, for all B belongs to A, A is not related to B. So, this we call it as a maximal element. So, minimal element is just the opposite. So, that is, the, an element A in the poset is said to be minimal element if there is no element in B in the poset such that B is less than or equal to A. That is, there does not exist B, A such belongs to A such that B is related to A. That is, for all B, belong, B belongs to A, B is not related to A. So, we will see the 
diagrammatic representation how to find the maximal and minimal elements so these are the definitions so the maximal and minimal elements are easy to find in the hash diagram and they are the topmost <coughs> and bottommost elements respectively so maximal is the topmost element and minimal is the bottommost elements for example in the hash diagram described previously one is the minimal element and four is the maximal element and if the maximal and minimal are unique then they are also called as greatest and least elements of the poset you can have any number of maximal and minimal element but if you have a unique maximal and minimal elements then we call them as greatest and least elements then we'll see the bounds in poset it is sometimes possible to find an element that is greater than or equal to all the elements in the subset of a poset a of s less than or equal to a so such an element is called upper bound of a so similarly we can found the lower bound of a so the upper bound of an element uh, set is the greater than or equal to all the elements in the subset whereas lower bound is the it is uh, less than or equal to all the elements in the subset of a poset so these bounds can be constrained to get the least upper bound and the greatest lower bound so these bounds are the elements which are less than or greater than all the other upper bounds or lower bounds respectively so we'll see one example then it will be more clear so the definitions goes like this upper bound let a r be a poset and a1 is a subset of a if u is an element of a such that a is related to u that means a is at the bottom and u is at the top for all a belongs to a1 then u is called as an upper bound of a1 that means all the elements of this subset must be related to with uh, this upper bound u whereas the least there as first we'll see the lower bound so lower bound is just the opposite so l is the lower bound if that l is related with all the elements of the subset now among the upper bounds we say one single element will be the least upper bound so what is that element we call it as lub so an element x that is an upper bound on the subset a1 and is less than all other upper bounds of a1 whereas the greatest lower bound it is greater than all other lower bounds of a1 you can have more than one upper bound and more than one lower bound so among that one will be recognized as a greatest upper bound uh, least upper bound and greatest lower bound so one example suppose here find the least upper bound and greatest lower bound of the following subsets so here minimal elements are a and maximum a maximal elements are h and i so now for each of the subsets you need to find the lower bound upper bound and least upper bound and greatest lower bound so for the subset uh, bc i will take so here you can observe b and c the lower bounds are <coughs> for the subset bc the lower bound are only a because only a is uh, below both b and c whereas if you see the upper bounds of bc so b is related to e and c is also related to e so e is one of the upper bound next c is related to f and b through e is also related to f so f is also upper bound and uh, similarly h is also upper bound and i is also upper bound so among these upper bounds least upper bound is e so likewise for other subsets also you can find the lower bound and upper bound and if you have multiple you can also find the 
greatest upper bound greatest lower bound and least upper bound so since here you have single lower bound that itself is a greatest lower bound so likewise you can find for gef and ef also thank you